It is my absolute pleasure to come to you today with a pre-recording for our beers and ideas. Now, Ross and I have gotten up at dawn's crack in single digits in winter Queensland to bring you Brian Walsh all the way from the US. So I would love to hand over to former Grand Poobah, Mr. Ross Vanderwolf, to introduce the lovely Mr. Brian Walsh. Thanks, Amanda, and hi, everybody. Look, uh, I find it a bit difficult where to start on how to introduce Brian Walsh. Um, just for facts, he's a 27-year MBRT member and obviously the president of the MBRT Foundation this year. Now, I'm sure a number of you would have heard and saw Brian speak at the 2005 annual meeting in New Orleans. And you would have heard that there is a lot more to Brian than the fact that he is a very successful financial advisor, heavily involved in his community, wonderful family man, and very, very committed with what he does, both work-wise and outside of work. He's a family man, a very humble man, and he has overcome unbelievable adversity to get to where he is today. Uh, Brian released a book last year that I will thoroughly endorse called Beyond the Mask. If you get the chance to buy it, it's available on Amazon. It's just a wonderful story and gives you a really good insight to Brian. I met Brian on a MBRT build before the Vancouver MBRT, sorry, the Toronto MBRT meeting back in 2012, I think it was. I was lucky enough to sit beside Brian on a bus to, work, to go to this project and we've been pretty good friends ever since. I describe Brian as the most Australian, non-Australian I've ever met. <laughs> he's down to earth, he's got a wicked sense of humour. And like one of the qualities that most Australians like about Brian is the fact that he calls a spade a shovel. So you're never left in any uncertain terms as to what Brian is thinking. But very typical of everyone I've met who is involved with the foundation, deeply committed and gives wholeheartedly of himself. So. With that very basic introduction, I'd like to welcome Brian to MBRT Australia. Over to you, Brian and Amanda. Welcome, Brian. What a glowing intro that was. It was a very nice. Uh, I'll, I'll send my check. <laughs> Brian, would you like to give us all a little bit of your background and how you came to be involved with the MBRT Foundation? Uh, sure, absolutely. And first, let me uh, thank both you and Ross for allowing me the opportunity to speak to uh, both the Australian and New Zealand uh, membership. Uh, it's wonderful to be with both of you, uh, more so Amanda than Ross, but um, we'll <laughs> do that as it may. Uh, I'll send my check. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, like most members, you know, we, we get involved in things, not just at MDRT, but most things in life because somebody asked us to or we found out about it, wanted to pursue it more on our own. And with MDRT Foundation, it's typically somebody's introducing you to the foundation. In, in, uh, I was at an annual meeting in Toronto in 1995, and I heard uh, an MDRT member speak on behalf of the foundation who had lost uh, his son, his, eight, I believe, 18-year-old son at the time, uh, to a skiing accident. Uh, and he spoke about you know, every parent's nightmare of, of that happening and how he donated his son, he and his wife donated his son's organs. And he later that year uh, sent an invitation to a dinner uh, for all those recipients. And it was just such a moving story um, that I, you know, really wanted to find out more about the foundation. And then uh, a fellow MDRT member, uh, Mitch Ostrove, who was president of foundation, I think, back in 01, um, uh, he had gotten me involved uh, more heavily in the foundation. I've really uh, been involved as much as they've asked me to uh, ever since. Excellent. Now, Australia have been very, very um, lucky to have many members in receipt of grants and we have had one of our beers and ideas sessions on how you go about applying for the grants and um, members have shared their stories of how that has supported local charities in their area. Can you give us a bit of a background on how MDRT goes about choosing the recipients for grants and the criteria that have to be met for that to happen? Sure. So, um, you know, I, I think the grants committee that uh, 
is chaired by a fellow MDRT member, and the committee is made up of all uh, MDRT members. And I think there's somewhere, depending on the year, 8 to 12 members of that committee, so fellow members looking at all the evaluations. Uh, the great thing about our grants program, I believe, is that they are blind. So the grants committee does not know how much a member has given. Um, they don't know who the member is that's supporting the charity. Um, so it, it, and this past year, what was really ironic is we had a 50-year, 5-0, 50-year member, Jerry Middle out of Denver, Colorado, won the $50,000 Quality of Life grant. And it was the first time he's ever applied for a grant. Oh, wow. So <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> imagine hitting the jackpot like that. Um, but it just goes to show you, he just never thought to do it. And uh, somebody nudged him to apply for a grant for this wonderful shelter out in Denver, Colorado, for, for domestic violence victims, women and children, um, which I was glad in March to go out and visit and present the check. And uh, it just goes to show two things, the great work that our fellow members do and why it's important to apply for a grant. Uh, we had a record-breaking grant application year, 257 grant applications wow. uh, that were reviewed by the Grants Committee. That's, that was 100, 100 more applications than the year before. Um, we want to get to a point where we have 500 applications wow. a year and then possibly 1,000. We're going to give away this year a record $1.7 million to charities around the world. Uh, and it's all because people like us, uh, MDR team members uh, want to give back to their communities, uh, not only in time and talent, but to give treasure to the MDRT Foundation so they can continue that work. And I suppose that leads on to the next question. You know, if you're giving away $1.7 million, how does that money end up in the MDRT Foundation coffers? You've said it's the generosity of members who traditionally you know, have been um, great givers. How can we contribute? What, what, how does it all work? Lift the hood for us, Brian. Well, so, you know, on the MDRT website and the foundation website, you can find the giving levels. We have uh, Excalibur Knights that um, give, have given $50,000 over their lifetime. Uh, we have a, a, a Excalibur Legion Society, which has three members in it, which is given uh, more than $250,000 in lifetime giving. Um, Inner Circle Society each year is a $5,000 donation. Uh, we uh, typically have somewhere between 100 and 130 members of that society every year. Um, so there's m multiple ways to give. Obviously, the annual meetings are biggest, uh, one of our biggest fundraisers. We now have expanded that. I, I, I think the greatest thing about being is an officer the last five years on the foundation is how we've expanded uh, what we do and where we go to not only give money, uh, but to find donations. And this year, our Gives Day will be our largest fundraiser of the year. And that's our their international members running basically a, a phone-a-thon uh, for 24 hours all across the globe. Wow. Um, and, I haven't heard the old telethons for years. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's it's kind of interesting that that didn't exist three years ago. And it will be our largest oh. fundraiser. So the innovation that the board uh, comes up with and the, the chair people of our committees and the, the different things that they do and the way they want to go outside the box and figure things out, uh, look, we're, we're going to have, it, it amazes me all the time, we're going to have our largest giving year ever and it was during a pandemic yeah that's amazing so and look, the know, charities that, are doing it tough so yeah very much so and uh it just goes to show the core beliefs of the mdrt members yep and amanda just just to expand a bit on the mdrt gives day that was really under the driver of ted rusinoff brian tarpey and brian walsh because Historically, MDRT Foundation has had phone-a-thons twice a year. Spring phone-a-thon I've been involved with in the US. 
and it just got to the stage where it was just too difficult and too expensive to do it that way. So the leadership team at the foundation, working in conjunction with the MDRT Foundation staff, came up with MDRT Gives Day. And the success has really been phenomenal. And I, I really think that's going to be one of the, the biggest tributes that we can see moving forward to that team of Ted, Brian Tarpey and Brian Walsh for, for doing this because the amount of people who were getting contacted by phones was, was dwindling and that is an old, old mm, way please. of raising money, whereas the new world, it, it's just taken off. First year was well, pretty quiet, Brian, wasn't it? But it, it's grown significantly since then. And being an observer when I was on executive committee and being executive committee liaison to the foundation, I've seen firsthand the growth that the foundation has had under this leadership. It's just and Ross, fantastic. I know you're going to share with us a little bit later. I, I wasn't aware of what the, I suppose, levels are when we talk about the nights um, in giving. So Ross is going to um, lift the lid on that a little bit for us and explain how that works. Brian, my understanding is that I suppose MDRT, um, being a US organisation, would possibly, like Australia, have ageing advisors who've probably been very, very big supporters in the past and big donors which would mean perhaps that there's a dying out of those very heavy sponsors for the foundation. So it sounds like, I suppose, the, the telethon is one way of innovating. How's the foundation looking to engage, I suppose, the next level and global? I mean, you've just had record membership. How do all these people then become aware of and involved with foundation? Well, uh, Amanda, thanks for the question, because I think what we've put a lot of time and effort into in the last 18 months is our strategic plan. And it's really based on outreach to our global membership um, and learning more of how they want to be communicated, uh, how they want to be communicated with. Um, and we, we take all of this very, very seriously. And I think that our results, particularly this year uh, and leading into next year, are showing the fruit of that labor, uh, of you know, trying to engage members around the world. We really believe the foundation is a wingman for MDRT. Uh, we're not a competing organization. Uh, we really feel a great partnership with MDRT and the executive committee. Um, it is the heart of MDRT. It's giving back to people much less fortunate than we are. How we're combating the aging advisors, which I'm sure, you know, Ross is one of them, I'm not. But, um, <laughs> you know, what we're trying to do to combat that is on certain, on different levels. We're reinventing ourselves, as in, for instance, on Gives Day. We're reinventing the Inner Circle Committee and, and what that means and how people can start giving it, at, which Ross will get into later, at different levels. And, and how do we inspire them to do that? Um, how do we reach out to these younger members? Uh, they, they don't have phones. They, they're, they usually have cell phones. How do we get that contact information? What are the things that uh, Brian Tarpey really harped on um, during his tenure uh, was data. How do we get data? And we have made a tremendous investment, um, and we just saw a, a glimpse of it two weeks ago. Uh, the information that we now can collect on what members want to have happen with the money from, from the grant applications and what they tell us uh, to what the data that the members are giving us tells us is absolutely phenomenal. And, and Brian deserves a lot of credit for really kind of uh, putting the pedal to the metal on that issue. And uh, we now are going to be able to tell exactly almost to the penny where every dollar went and what type of organization it went to. Um, and being able to share that information with our members, we hope, uh, will get us better results not only on the giving side on, from younger uh, members, but on the giving side. Uh, we know that most MDRT members do philanthropic work in their communities. Um, it's part of their nature. It's part of why we help people every day not just our clients, but in our communities. Um, and what we're really trying to focus on is doing a better job of getting people to apply for applications. And we've really put an effort in that in the last 18 months. Uh, it proved out exceedingly well this year. 
uh, with 257 grants. Um, and we're hoping uh, more people can get educated on how to apply for a grant um, and not wait like Jerry Middle did for 50 years. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you able to give us a bit of an update on how the latest uh, charity went to write love on her arms that we just had at the annual meeting? Now, mental health is a massive issue in Australia for advisors at the moment, and a report has recently come out that states the suicide rate amongst advisors presently is 12 times higher than the national average with the wow. amount of pressure that is on with regulation change and just, you know, being attacked from every which side. So would love an update on, on how that particular charity went. Yeah, so it was really interesting. I remember um, sitting in a room when we picked the charity for the annual meeting and people were a little, you know, obviously mental health is not something that's out there in the forefront. Everybody tries to hide it and uh, don't want to admit that they have some issues, whether it's stress-related issues or anxiety-related issues. I mean, people deal with things differently, but they had, we all have issues. You know, it's that old saying, you know, put put everybody's problems in, in the middle of the room and you'll probably pick your own back up, right? Um, so what I wanted to get across and the executive committee wanted to get across was MBRT Foundation traditionally is edgy. It brings people. It, we bring charities to light that a lot of people don't want to talk about. If you just look a few years ago in uh, at the annual meeting, uh, we brought out human trafficking. Nobody was talking about human trafficking to the degree they are today. So we like to think we are like the MDRT, finding great speakers all over the world to come inspire our members to do better. Uh, we think the foundation is trying to be on the forefront of issues and bring them it, to light to our membership to say, hey, these are real issues, and and we're here to help, and not just help the charity, but help you be aware of what's going on out there, and how can we help you in another way? And to write love on our arms, you know, if anybody saw the annual meeting or, or they heard from Jamie, just a tremendous um, start for somebody who's really suffered from mental illness, um, had very, very serious issues, and a, a dear friend to, to then take that on his shoulders and make the charitable organization that he made to this day uh, is tremendous. And our membership was so generous during the annual meeting, we're actually, we're actually going to be giving him about 50% more uh, than we promised him. Uh, oh, what a great the, outcome. We don't have a final number, but it's going to be in the $75,000 range. That's fantastic. And I, I loved um, one of my pet charities is the Hunger Project, so I was beyond excited no, when no. it was chosen um, in 2019 to be the, the partner. Ross, is there anything else in your experience of working? Um, I know XCOM's involved with the foundation, although not. There is the, the you know Chinese walls there. Um, anything else you'd like to share about the foundation and yep. what you discovered working with them? Well, I, similar to Brian, I was very fortunate. I, I served on a um, bylaws and ethics committee a long time ago, and I was lucky enough or unlucky enough to be seated beside Brent Kimball, and Brent went on to become the uh, president of the foundation. And he was astonished that someone who had been a member of MDRT for as long as I had at that time hadn't ever been fully introduced to the foundation. And for those of you who know Brent, like most people in the foundation, very, very passionate about the work the foundation does and so on. And after spending a couple of days with Brent, I made a commitment that I would find out more about the foundation and get involved. And uh, I ended up taking my son on a project to South America when he finished high school to build a uh, playground for a girls' orphanage, which was um, organised by the foundation and a joint uh, project, Playgrounds Around the World, I think it was. And since then, I became more and more involved. I've been on a number of uh, projects, a number of bills, and I was asked to serve as a as the first international trustee of the foundation. And when you are involved in the foundation and you see the work they do, there's no ego involved. There's no one trying to jockey for positions to get on committees and do this and do that. It's all about giving back. And one of the foundation's great 
sayings is MDRT is what we wow. do, but the foundation is who we are. And it really proves that MDRT members have bigger hearts. They're very, very generous. And I was lucky enough to serve on the grants committee. And I have not had a more humbling experience than reading through the grant applications that came in the year that I served and the amount of work that our members do in their communities and with charities and their own foundations. It is quite staggering. And that, that foundation experience for me was just unbelievable. Unfortunately, I couldn't serve my full term as a, as a trustee because I was asked to serve on the yeah, executive didn't tell committee. Me that, that down, yeah. Brian will tell you that <laughs> the, the foundation, foundation <laughs> asked MBRT to take me off, off their hands. So that sounds about right. But I, I, I still stay very much connected with, with the foundation. And um, lucky enough in my year as past president that I was executive committee liaison to the foundation and we helped fund the foundation strategic plan. So I was involved with the strategic plan that Brian Tarpey drove with, with Ted Rusnoff and Brian Walsh obviously driving it with him. And to see where the foundation's headed and what they're trying to achieve broaden their footprint is just outstanding. And we really do more, need more involvement globally. I'll share some figures with you when we have our um, session in a couple of weeks' time as to what level of commitment that our US members have carried for an enormous amount of time and how that is gradually dwindling and why the foundation needs us as Australian members and global members more than ever to keep well, driving been so forward with the promise that we give. to be in receipt so, of so much. It only it makes really sense, doesn't it, that we're giving back as well. So, perfect. No, thank you so much, gentlemen, yeah. for sharing all that on the foundation and the amazing work. I know we're, we're so grateful when we're handing over that check. It gives us the warm and fuzzy. So, you know, to have you guys running it behind the scenes and know that we can support that. And I'm looking forward, Ross, to knowing more about the inner circle and how we can aspire to join join those nights as well. It sounds brilliant. Thank you again, Brian. And look, I right. hope um, on your travels you're able to join in and um, come back to the session with us later on today. So we look forward to you hopefully joining us for some Q&A later on. I would, I would love to, and that's probably going to be up to United Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a cold beer waiting for you. Yes, yes. Oh, that's I have it in my calendar, and I, I hope to, to join yeah. all of you uh, live for some Q&A. And uh, if, if I'm not there, I just want to thank everybody, uh, knowing that you will support the foundation and, and do your level best to give as much as you can. Uh, more importantly, uh, stay strong out there. Be aware of yourself, your mental health, get help if you need it, and, uh, you know, God bless. Thank you. Thanks, Brian.